This is the seventh section of chapter 12 on differentiation. And this section is about increasing and decreasing functions. Now, by considering the gradient function, that's the derivative, we can determine whether a function is increasing or decreasing. So, for example, if we find that on a particular set of values, on what we call an interval, the gradient function is always positive, then we can say that the function itself is increasing. And if on a, a different interval, we find that the gradient function is always negative, then we can say that the function itself is decreasing. So if we've got a derivative is always greater than or equal to zero in a particular interval, so I've just put a and b, so these are two x values, then the function itself is increasing in that interval. And if the derivative f dash of x is less than or equal to zero in an interval, again, two values of x here, then f of x, the function itself, is decreasing in the interval. In other words, the function is sort of always going down. Now I've put a double-headed arrow here because these statements can be read the other way around. So for example, if a function is increasing in that interval, then the derivative is always greater than or equal to zero in that interval. So these statements can be used either way around. Example 12. Show that the function f of x equals x cubed plus 24x plus 3 is increasing for all real values of x. So what we need to show is that the derivative function f dash of x is always greater than or equal to 0 if it's always increasing. So let's work out the derivative. So that would be 3x squared plus 24. And what we want to do is we want to show this is always greater than or equal to zero. Now we can sort of see this, but we need to explain it. So if I take any value of x and put it in here, whether it's positive or negative, I'm going to square it, it's going to become positive. Then I'm going to have three times a positive number. Then I'm going to be adding 24 to it. So this whole thing here will be positive. So we need to put that in words. OK, so for any value of x, 3x squared plus 24 is actually always going to be greater than or equal to 24, since this is making any negative values of x positive. Therefore, f dash of x, a derivative, is always greater than or equal to zero. Hence, the function f of x is always increasing. It won't ever be decreasing because its gradient is always positive. And we'll just put there uh, add on to increasing for all and we'll just copy what they've got here all real values of x example 13 find the interval on which the function f of x x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x is decreasing so we start by finding the gradient function that's going to be 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. And if we want to find the, the values or the interval on which this function is decreasing, we need to find the values of x, the interval for which this is less than or equal to 0. So we just solve that. 3x squared plus 6x minus 9. We want to find out when is that less than or equal to 0. So it's now about solving this inequality. So what we'll do is we'll divide everything by 3. So we'll get x squared plus 2x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. Now remember the way that we solve these quadratic inequalities is we're going to have to factorise it. Now hopefully this factorises. Let's have a look here. So less than or equal to 0. Uh, the two numbers need to be... 1 and 3, 
and we want plus three and minus one. Okay, so that gives us what we call the critical values. And the critical values are going to be one and negative three. So critical values x equals one, x equals negative three. Now we want to do some sort of sketch to help us decide um, the interval for which this is below the axis. Now this is going to be a u-shaped quadratic crossing at these critical values three and negative one. Oh sorry, one and negative three. So we'll put one here, negative three here. It's u-shaped. So it's going to be like this. So we're interested in the bit where it's less than or equal to zero. So the bit down here, so this bit below the axis, and that's below the axis in this interval here. So the values of x between 1 and negative 3. So the value of x needs to be between 1 and negative 3, and it's less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 3. So this is the interval on which the function is decreasing. Now we could write that like this, x is in the interval, so it's like a rounded e there, like this is in the interval, and then we put the two numbers in brackets, square brackets like that, between negative three and one. So you should now be able to do exercise 12g on page 271 of the textbook.